your afternoon programming to bring you some breaking news. There is a horde of hungry houseplant parents to be descending on the plant outpost in Wilmington, North Carolina's cargo district. They're blocking traffic on 16th Street, one of the major thoroughfares in Wilmington, all so that they can get their hands on a baby Dracaena or maybe a little Monstera plant. And there's a cactus pop-up as part of the plant outpost today. And when we spoke with many of the people waiting in line, they said that they were more than happy to wait in the 110 degree heat index just so they could get a picture with their new baby plant in front of what has become Wilmington's hottest new shop, the plant outpost. I'm Katie Elzer Peters and I am the owner of the Garden of Words LLC and it's a green industry digital marketing firm and we do email marketing, web development, um, strategy, basically anything that you can think of that is part of this new digital world. And so I'm really excited to talk to you today about online marketing and um, so I'm gonna cover, basically these are the three big points to one, do what works, two, use updated tech, that will help you a lot, that is what works, and then three, how to get started, and I have a free planning worksheet for you. And I am going to use basically two types of kind of case studies or places and throw in some other examples while um, we're going through this and the first one is you might guess the plant outpost and um, so I'm going to be talking about the way that they went viral and then the second one is um, Rockledge Gardens in Florida and um, Liz Riley who is their managing director talked to me and we have a lot of great clips from her that pertain to a lot of this new online marketing world that um, all of you are navigating. So thank you so much to Liz for giving of your time and I can't wait for everyone to hear your great nuggets that you have to share. So we're gonna start out by um, hearing from Liz and I just wanna acknowledge this is not easy. Everybody is changing their business models basically overnight. And Liz speaks to something that I think all of you are experiencing and we'll set the stage for the rest of our talk. We're having to um, develop and flex um, some new muscles uh, with regard to content creation. You know, before we could just tell people what we wanted them to know or, um, or present it to them in our signage or our merchandising. And now we're having to convey this information from a distance. Thanks, Liz. So now let's get back to it. And we're going to talk about how you can use online marketing to get customers, new customers, and retain your existing customers. And here's the deal. Marketing and merchandising are now inextricably entwined. Um, you can't separate them. Basically, people are not buying stuff from you. They are buying an experience. And for marketing to be successful, marketing actually has to be part of the experience. And we totally saw that with the plant outpost. Um, so remember the plant outpost story? That could be you but like in, in a good way. I mean, nobody wants a whole bunch of um, crowding going on right now, but people clamoring to get plants from you, I mean, that's pretty good, you know, situation. You literally cannot pay 
for this type of PR and marketing, but you can create a situation that fosters it. And what we're going to do today is we're going to break down how they actually did that. So um, we're going to go through how to go the good kind of viral. And it's basically these steps. Um, and this is the do what works part of the talk. You're going to define your audience communicate directly to them and with them in language using visuals that they understand and enjoy. It's not really about what you want to look at. It's about what your audience wants to look at. You're going to convey scarcity. You're going to hype it up and you're going to provide an experience. So let's get started with that. Yes, do what works. I'm going to try to show you what is working now for places because, um, you know, what, what's happening now is different than what was happening a year ago. Obviously we're living in a totally different world. So first you need to define your audience and communicate with your intended audience in their preferred channel. So that might be Instagram. Basically the plant outpost does all of their marketing, all their business, everything via Instagram. There are other places that are really successful with email, some on Facebook. Um, so you need to see what resonates with your audience where. It's not a one size fits all, unfortunately. I can't tell you, well, if you do everything on Instagram, you'll be 100% successful because it just really depends on who you're trying to get um, your message to. So we're going to hear from Liz about how they use Facebook versus Instagram in their marketing and how they've found um, one platform reaches one set of customers and the other platform reaches a second set of customers. We'll see that like if it's a, um, a unique house plant and we feature it on our Instagram feed and then, you know, have a little signal to the post on the Instagram story. Um, that we will absolutely sell out of that houseplant online. Um, we can do that similarly with things like shrubs and roses and plumerias and, and more landscape plants um, on Facebook. So, um, so kind of seeing those two different audiences, the, the younger, you know, interested in their indoor jungle um, group on, on Instagram, this is nothing new. Everybody knows that, you know, houseplants are going to be um, a, more of a hot topic on Instagram. And then our, our um, more established audience, um, the, our, our customers who are, have, have homes and are interested in, in landscaping um, are gravitating more towards Facebook. Okay, thanks Liz. That was really great information about how you use Facebook versus Instagram. And another part I want to um, discuss just briefly about, and we touched on this in the Monday retail planning seminar, um, Clint mentioned that you can um, split off potentially your house plant department into its own shop. And I actually have a little example of a place that has done that very successfully. It's the um, Forest Flower in Indianapolis and um, they have their garden center part and you can see a picture of it. It's really just plants on benches and then a building that has, you know, their fertilizers and things just out on a bench, on benches. It's not, I mean, they have some cute stuff, but it's not like cutesy boutique-y. Um, and then they also have their little houseplant boutique, which is in a separate little building. It is mere steps away from the garden center. And it's like stepping into an entirely different world. And it obviously caters to a totally different um, audience. So um, you could split off into a, a different location entirely, or you could split off into another building on your property. And it doesn't have to be a big one. I mean, the plant outpost is literally one shipping container. That's part of its appeal. It's this little micro shop. Um, there's no reason why you can't have your own micro shop. Maybe you can get a shipping container delivered to your garden center property. Um, just create Instagrammable moments. That's, that's how all of this happens. Um, so another important part of getting it done and doing what works right now is to provide consistent communication and accurate information. And if you don't do this, you're not going to have anyone to talk to. And I, I'm just be really straight. Um, this is the most important part of your marketing right now. And you might not even think that it would be the most important part of your marketing, but um, people 
before they can do anything else, it's kind of like when people go to your website, I always say people are looking for who are you, what do you sell, and how can I get it? So right now people are looking for current hours, what you have for sale, and your COVID procedures. Um, do people need to wear a mask? Are you wearing masks? What's the you know procedure? How do they, if they ordered something on online for curbside pickup, how do they get it? Um, and you need to update all of your various channels, your website, your social media, and your voicemail recording at a minimum. Um, also, you really need to update your Google listing if something changes um, so that people have the most you know, current information. And um, with all these new procedures, so one of the first things that you wanna think about in terms of marketing and selling is don't surprise your customers. And so um, Rockledge has a really great solution that they came up with and you can steal this too if you haven't already. So here's Liz talking about how they communicated to customers about their COVID procedures and their curbside pickup procedure. One of the things that um, I was really proud of my team for creating was um, my uh, my events and marketing director Jessica. Uh, she, on her day off, um, created a, an Instagram um, story um, on IG Live where um, she actually went through the entire process of using our curbside pickup system, and then. Um, she, uh, you know, sort of branded it the way that we brand our, our Instagram story. And then it was, it was so, it was just so charming to see her go through the entire process and, and demystify it for people. All right. Thanks, Liz. Um, so now we're going to take a look at the video that her staff member made to help people see what the procedure is for um, curbside pickup. Hi, my name is Jessica and I work at Rockledge Gardens, but today I'm off of work, but I wanted to do some gardening. So I decided to purchase some stuff on our website for curbside pickup. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I went to the website, rocklegegardens.com, went over here to shop our inventory. Cool. Okay. So farmer's market, shirts, gift certificates. I'm going to go to the garden center right here. And then here are all of the products and the breakdown, different departments. So I need houseplants, so I'm gonna go right here. All right, perfect, scroll down. Okay, let's see. This aglaonemia looks really nice, so I'm gonna add that to my cart, add to cart. Okay, cool. And I'll just keep shopping now. Let's see what else I can find. Okay, so I placed my order. This is my receipt that came in with my order number. Your order will be available for a pickup in the afternoon. We will contact you via email when your order is ready. Okay, great. And this is all the stuff that I bought. Perfect. Okay, so I just received my curbside pickup ready email from Rockledge Gardens says that it's going to be ready for me in slot 21, which is in our parking lot. Okay, great. And then it gives me some safety protocol instructions for when I come to pick it up um, and how to load it into my vehicle and a number to contact. Okay. So I just got out of my car and my email said that my stuff is in slot 21. So I parked and now I'm gonna walk over to slot 21 to pick up my stuff. All right, so we have, let's see, I think this is slot 21 right here. It'll say it. There it is, slot 21, and there's all my stuff. All right, so here's all my stuff loaded up in my car and ready for me to go home and garden. I even have my little seeds back there in a Ziploc bag to keep them safe because it's drizzling a little bit right now my receipt, double checking everything, making sure it's all good. All right. As part of doing what works, this is something that you may or may not have really spent much time thinking about, but I want to encourage you to do it now. 
um, if you haven't, and that is to develop and use your specific brand voice and style. Um, and this is something you might have heard about a style sheet. Um, if you've done any printing or graphic, you know, hired a graphic designer um, or a web designer, but these are your colors, your fonts, it's the overall look and feel of your communication. And um, this is all communication from Chalet, which is a garden center in Illinois. And you can see their, um, a screenshot of their website on the lower right hand corner of this slide, um, a, a tile of um, nine images from their Instagram feed, and then a piece from their email marketing. And um, you really want to, again, use visuals that your audience will gravitate towards. So Chalet is pretty high end. Um, you can see their color palette is um, bright, but um, there's lots of greens. The pictures that they use are very polished. Um, so if you, again, you just want to have a consistent experience from before people walk in the door all the way through. Um, again, that helps with not surprising the customer and there's enough surprises already that um, it is worth it to take a little extra time to help create a consistent experience that just makes people feel more comfortable and everybody is just really uncomfortable right now. Um, and so this is not really in some ways your typical marketing talk because I'm not like, oh, I'll put people in this funnel and then collect the emails and have a lead magnet. Right now, marketing is as much about communication and comfort and providing joy as it is about selling. And I mean, honestly, that's probably something that a lot of people have, marketing's always really like that. It always needs to inspire and um, excite people. It really isn't just about selly, sell, sell. Um, deep thoughts with Katie. So um, that's, that's your brand voice and style. And again, Liz has a nice, um, has a nice little explanation of how they use their brand voice and style and how that has made a big difference to their customers during COVID. People want you to be you. They, they want, um, they want something unique. They want something interesting. You don't have to be like everyone else. You don't have to be the plant outpost. You don't have to be Rockledge. You don't have to be Chalet. You just have to be you and you have to be you all the time. Um, so let's listen to Liz talk about their brand voice development and how that has helped them keep their customers. Yeah, um, we have a pretty high open rate on our email. Um, Teresa, my mother-in-law owner, um, always, uh, she's, she's a gifted writer. She, um, always shares something pretty personal. A lot of people have told us, uh, especially during the time of COVID that reading what she has written has given them a lot of comfort. Um, so our email is certainly, um, the, the number one and, and most intimate tool that we have of communicating with our customers. Um, we're very fortunate as well that in the early um, years of businesses using Facebook, um, again, my mother-in-law, this was before my time, um, really was, um, you know, kind of bearing her soul and her outlook on life in a way that really resonated with people. Okay, in terms of what works, another way that the plant outpost um, ended up with their mob of people wanting their plants. And I know mobs are what we're going for again, but we want this kind of fervor and rabid fans, people that are going to tell everyone else about you. It doesn't mean you want 400 people to show up at the same time. It's just that you want people to be super excited to tell others about you. Um, so um, you can convey scarcity and this can be time limits, this can be per customer item limits, and this is not, um, this is not to be fake, it's not to hoodwink or swindle or be dishonest, but the fact of the matter is plants, plants are not a digital project, product. They're, 
is a limit to how many caladium you have, or in this case, how many cactus or cacti are going to be at the pop-up. And so, um, you know, one way to get people excited is to, um, to have time limits and have customer limits. This forces people to make a decision and it will actually make people more comfortable. People are a lot more comfortable once they have made the decision to buy or not to buy than they are if, um, if they're waiting. So again, it seems to some people like a really heavy handed marketing tactic when really it's just, it's just forcing your customers to decide, are they gonna buy from you or not? And, um, and then once they've made that decision, they can be excited about this decision that they've made, whether it's to buy from you or not. So you're really helping people to be able to be a little more comfortable in what they're doing. Hype it up. This is definitely something that plays into the way the plant outpost has been successful. So all these different pictures are, um, there's some shout outs from the plant outposts neighbors in the cargo district where they're located um, from artisan locale and bespoke coffee and the Queen Street barber shop. Um, and then, so those are things that their their neighbors other people, so their community helped hype it up. And then, um, and the, and they are still unloading is a screen capture from um, one of their Insta stories on the day of the cactus pop up where she was hyping it up, getting people excited. And um, so they would want to come over and see what was happening. So um, I read Seth Godin's blog all the time. I mean, I get delivered to my email box and he always says that the things that grow the fastest are the things that are more fun with more people. And, you know, that that's a little hard right now when we're trying not to get a whole bunch of people together. But um, um, that kind of goes along with, um, well, okay, let's just say like, Facebook got big because Facebook became more fun when there were more people on it for a while. Now we won't talk about how fun or not fun Facebook is, but um, apps that are finite, like let's just say there's an app for a cookbook. Those are never going to become viral apps because a cookbook, unless there's some kind of interactive component, now if there's an interactive component, I could see how it would get bigger. Um, and there are probably cooking apps like that that I just don't know about because I'm not super into cooking. Um, but if it's just a cookbook and there's no incentive to go in and interact with people, then, you know, it's not going to grow. People aren't going to be, um, drawn to it because it's not more fun. If there are more people, it's just a cookbook. So hyping it up, getting people involved, this whole people like us do things like this is huge. Um, so I have, um, I have these prayer plants here. So here's one. And then I'm recording this in the evening. So they're all folded up because why would one want to record during the day like a sane person? Well, so one of my clients, Easy to Grow Bulbs, and you'll hear from them during e-commerce, um, they sent me their their little gift set with um, their with the prayer plants. And I had not really, I mean, I thought they were cool, but I hadn't been like that obsessed with them. Well, I've come to find out that houseplant people are really obsessed with these. And so I kind of, I'm kind of obsessed with them now. Like I didn't really plan to be obsessed with them, but um, again, people like us do things like this. People like us, houseplant people, do things like this, become obsessed with prayer plants and collecting all of them. So you want to, in terms of doing what works, provide an experience. People are bored, they're restless, they're anxious, they're nervous. Give them something to take their mind off of what's happening outside, school reopening, jobs, mortgage, whatever. Give them a way to be proud of their gardens by having a photo contest or a little video contest where people are tagging you. Everyone loves to be praised about their gardens. I said this in my Monday talk. I'm going to say it again um, because it's true. You can also give them an opportunity to shop that feels like an activity. So at the plant outpost, it was like an event. It was a to-do. It was a happening. 
and then give them a way to connect with other people who share their plant obsessions. And we're going to hear a little bit more from Rockledge about that. So Rockledge Gardens did this. They provided an experience and an opportunity to shop that was like an activity and a way to connect with other people by moving their Mango Madness event, which is usually held in person, online. So Liz talks to us a little bit about how they did that. So I would say that the most um, successful um, manifestation of the, the combo of a curbside pickup kit and an online class that we've done so far um, was actually just uh, this past Sunday. It was our annual Mango Madness event. So typically that event would um, take place in person. Uh, there would be a seminar on growing mangoes and then afterwards a tasting where everybody got to um, sample little um, pre-cut bits of lots of different kinds of mangoes. Um, and mangoes are one of those things that um, there is a vast difference in the, uh, the taste and the texture from variety to variety. So it was really valuable for people because um, if they're going to be investing in a mango tree, they want to make sure that it's something that they actually like. Um, so, uh, what we decided to do this year to replace that event was, um, have it be a virtual meeting on zoom and, um, the option to purchase either a five pound or a 10 pound, like mystery box of mangoes. And, um, so the, the, we put it all on Eventbrite. Um, the class cost um, $10 just by itself, and you got a $5 coupon toward a mango tree that was gonna be good for two weeks with your ticket. Um, and then you had the option of purchasing a, um, the, your ticket plus the five pound box of mangoes or your ticket plus the 10 pound box of mangoes. And then we, we instead of getting little pieces of mangoes, everybody got an, like whole mangoes. So the five pound box had between four and six mangoes. The 10 pound box had between seven and nine mangoes. And, um, and then we actually just labeled with a Sharpie what the different varieties are. And we had like a little kit um, with them. We had you know, uh, instructions on the best way to, to cut a mango, um, things like that. And then they got to join into uh, the Zoom and there were about 30 people who participated when we did it this way. And um, it, was, um, it was really successful and engaging. Thanks, Liz. So that is a little bit about what was um, a using a pickup kit and then a Zoom webinar to connect people and let them shop and let them learn. So kits are huge right now. And um, I'm saying this is take it and make it, which is different from make it and take it. Like it used to be, they would come into your place and they would make their thing and take it home. Now, instead they get the kit and then they take it home and make it. So this is a um, terrarium kit. This is another way to marry marketing with merchandising. Um, this is a terrarium kit from the flo um, Forest Flower Indie. And um, you can always sell, just sell a kit and then ask them to post their finished products and share them. Um, my business coach has always told me that the transformation is in the transaction. Like it doesn't really matter if they take your class or not. You're, you're giving them hope just by allowing them to purchase it, which sounds so capitalistic, but it's true. Um, you're helping them envision a better life for themselves. Um, so Another little clip from Rockledge is that they offered container garden kits and this is a little video, two minutes that they put together that people could watch that would help them plant their container gardens.
Okay, so a big part of online marketing is using updated tech and um, everybody's learning new things and they're learning new ways to deal with their tech. So let's hear from Liz again about how she feels like um, they are adapting to new tech. And so we're, we're getting, you know, really, uh, really good at certain video editing softwares. We're figuring out how to uh, export stuff that, you know, just kind of happens on our Instagram story. That's like, oh, actually that we don't want that to disappear in 24 hours. And we actually want that to go on some other platforms because it's, you know, it's in the moment and we're all responding to things in the moment. Um, and everything's changing so rapidly, especially in the beginning. Um, that, uh, that we're finding that, that all of these things that we're putting out there, we're having to find new ways to harvest them or harness them, new ways to present them and, um, and to get them to as many people at a distance as possible. All right. So that was great. Basically, we're all in the deep end trying to learn new things. Um, so there's one thing that you'll hear a lot about if you listen to very many of the consultants in the green industry is this idea of a tech stack. And um, that is basically all the tech that you use. And by calling it a stack, we're kind of talking about how it all um, relates to each other. So um, don't let tech hold you back, but you, it is time, if you're a digital dinosaur, it's time to update. Um, so one of the programs I really like for graphics is Canva. Um, if you're like, how am I going to do all this social media stuff? You can schedule most of it. Tailwind is one. Later is one. Hootsuite is another scheduling program. Um, with your phone, um, we're at the point we want to have a personal touch with people, but it may not be possible to actually answer all of your inbound phone calls. So record a voicemail with choices and you could have someone whose job it is to record the voicemail every morning to say, good morning, it's July 15th and we're looking for, forward to a beautiful day. Here's what we have new in stock, caladiums, plumeria, um, you know, plants. We are offering blah da 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 off certain plants, and we just launched a new online Zoom um, workshop or YouTube workshop. So make sure to check it out. Have a great day. If you need this, press one. If you need this, press two. Oh, I should have said. And our hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you would like to place an order for same day curbside pickup, please place it by noon. You know, so you can. You can have just like a written out script and they just update the things that change every morning. And if you say, this is the date, these are our hours, this is what we have in new, you take care of a lot of questions for people. You know, and you might be like, oh, well, I hate listening to phone trees. Okay, that's fine. But some people do like listening to phone trees. If they don't wanna to listen to the phone, they can look on your website, which is also updated in your social media, which will also be updated. Um, you can have um, text messaging for customer service, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Email marketing is still a great way to keep in touch with people. Um, social media, Facebook and Instagram are the primary ways that you're going to reach most of your audience, most likely. Maybe Pinterest if you have time, maybe YouTube if you have time, um, maybe even TikTok, depends on who you're trying to reach. And then your website, your website is the mothership. So it definitely needs to be updated. And if it hasn't had a facelift in a while, you might want to stick around for our e-commerce e -commerce 101 talk. Um, if you need help, upwork.com is a great place to find help. And then um, there are a lot of columnists for the green industry magazines. Leslie Halleck is one. I write a, a column, Rob Sproul writes some columns or does some webinars. There's a lot of different people that are tech people that also work in this industry and they understand what you're up against and they would be happy to help you figure out the tech. One thing that is becoming more um, common is text messaging um, support. And so if your phones are overwhelmed, Instaply is a service, software as a service, SaaS. We'll talk about that a little more in the e-commerce talk. Um, and it is great for helping you um, 
answer inbound questions with um, via text messaging that is an online interface that you can log into and then do from your desktop. Um, and I talked with um, Gina Schaefer, who is the owner of a chain called A Few Cool Hardware Stores. There are 13 Ace Hardware Stores in the DC and Baltimore area. And she has some tips on how to use this Instaply um, to manage customer service. Hi everyone, my name is Gina Schaefer and I own 13 Ace Hardware Stores in Washington DC and Baltimore, Maryland. I've been using the app Instaply for a little over a year now and I thought I'd give you a couple of quick tips that we found really work for us using it here in our store. First of all, you have to publicize that number everywhere, on your social media, in your e uh, email signatures, anywhere you would advertise, make sure that number's there so your customers can find it and use it. Second of all, set some standards. For example, people text very differently than they talk on the phone. We decided that hello, thank you, what else can I help you with, were all phrases that also needed to find their way into our text messages so our customers felt like we were communicating as professionally as possible. Uh, third, decide when and how you're going to pick up the phone. Sometimes it's still much easier once you've started texting with the customer to pick up the phone and just give them a call and finish the transaction. And then finally, I would say paying for the app has, I've paid for it thousands of times over uh, by just making a single transaction. I might sell a $900 grill or a pallet of mulch because of one text message and boom, a more than a month and a half of all of the stores that I uh, use it at is paid for. So anyway, best of luck with your um, app and your Instaply and your texting and anything else that you try to do to communicate with your customers. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you. All right, now that we've all given you tons of ideas, it's time for you to get started. So how do you do that? First of all, I'm gonna tell you, perfect is the enemy of good. Let's just get going. I have a plan for you. You're gonna to wanna to complete your planning worksheet that will go through a lot of the different things I've talked about. It'll help you identify your key staff members, note any new tech or equipment needs, and help you determine your initiatives or at least get you to sit and think about them because you can't do everything and you don't need to do everything. Just pick a few things and do them well. Um, plan the marketing support for your initiatives, the emails, the social media, if you want to do any little videos, and then go and do it. So um, I'm excited to see what you come up with. I do have a planning worksheet for you. You can download it if you visit tinyurl.com slash G-O-W marketing plan. This is not a filled out plan. It's a worksheet to help to, for you to make your own plan. And then if you need any more info, you can always contact me. This is all my contact information and the at Katie underscore Garden of Words is my Instagram account. I'm a total art fanatic. And so I, my Instagram is like all art right now. Although there are some plants on there too. You can always email me and check out my website. My website has my phone number on it. You're welcome to call me. So um, now we'll stop and take questions.